we'll look at the second Corinthians in chapter 4 and uh, reading at verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Uh, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Uh, for we which uh, live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. We need to understand that we are mortal. In other words, we die. You know, 10 out of 10 people die, as you know, and for the wages of sin is death. That's why we have death. The point is this, God wants to save your soul. God wants to forgive you of all of your sins. And the only way you can do that is through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and your right response to that. You see, you can respond in the wrong way and you can also respond in the right way. Now the right way to respond to it is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So 10 out of 10 people die, as you know. For the wages of sin is death, that's the bad news. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you want to be in heaven, you'll have to come God's way. And God's way is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The one who died on the cross can be your Saviour this afternoon. What can you do then? with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will he be your saviour or will he have to be your judge? It's up to you. Like the way to heaven? Yep. Have a good night. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus. That is the believers. They'll be raised again. You see, there is a resurrection. There is a resurrection of the just and of the unjust. Now the just are those who will be made just, in other words, made just as though they'd never sinned through faith in Jesus Christ. But the unjust might be you this afternoon. Have you received forgiveness for your sin? Maybe you're still unjust. God wants to make you just. He wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. Will you come to Christ to be saved? Will you put your faith alone in Him for your eternal salvation? Salvation is of the Lord. We're ever going to be saved, we'll have to be God's work. And God has moved. God has sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. So the Lord Jesus Christ was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. So, if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you acknowledge that you're a sinner before Him, that is repentance. It's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. That's what God wants for each and every one of us, that our soul be saved, we'll have a home in heaven, we'll have forgiveness for our sins, and we'll have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Romans 5, 1 says. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's made peace through the blood of His cross. He shed His precious blood on the cross so that your sins and mine could be washed away. But that's not automatic. We've got to come to Him by faith. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, otherwise we'll never ever receive forgiveness for our sins. 
You should know him that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, that's the believers, the Christians, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace uh, might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, as you know, when we get older, you know, we get more aches and pains, things wear out in our body. And, uh, you know, we have to understand that, but the point is this, we have a spirit and soul inside of our body that leaves our body at the moment of death. And God is rightly interested in you this afternoon, my friend. He wants to save your precious soul. You and I have a soul inside of our body that leaves our body at the moment of death. Where will you be one second after you die? Will you be in heaven? The only way you can be in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. By putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can become a child of God. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So it says here, For which uh, cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which uh, is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, uh, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. That includes our bodies. We need to understand that. These bodies of ours are temporal. You know, at the moment of death, they're going to bury our body. But we won't be there. We would have left our body the moment we breathe our last breath. Our spirit and soul leave our body at the moment of death. But where? Where will you be? It's either going to be heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or it's going to be down in hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell. That's why I'm here this hour to bring you the message of hope and salvation through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who loved us enough to die upon the cross. Yes, says here, the things which are not seen I'll just go back. Well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And that includes our spirit and soul that leaves our body, as I keep on saying, at the moment of death. This is what we've got to be more concerned about. Our spirit and soul, where are you going to be the moment you die? It's either going to be heaven if you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your saviour. Or it's going to be down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ who wants to be your saviour right now this hour. Will you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe upon him? Put your faith alone in him for your eternal salvation. Moving on now to 2 Corinthians in chapter 5. We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, that means our bodies, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Yes, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back again into the air, we call it the rapture of the church or the translation of the church, if you like. It's when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down into the air to take the Christians, the believers, to be filled with himself. We are going to have changed bodies like under his glorious body. Praise the Lord for that moment of time that will come, I believe, soon when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down and receives the believers unto himself. Will you be left behind to go through the seven-year tribulation period? Not only that, but then to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's no need for that, my friend. You can be saved by the grace of God by putting your faith in Jesus Christ as your Saviour. Yes, for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven, 
If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle, in this body, do groan, being burdened, not for that uh, we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. As I said earlier in the message, we are mortal. In other words, we die. You know, death is defined by God as a separation of the spirit and soul from the body. That's what we read in the Word of God. When the spirit leaves the body, that is the time of death. But are you ready to die? In other words, have you received forgiveness for your sins? Because if you haven't received forgiveness for your sins, you'll be in hell at the moment you die. And God does not want that for you, my friend. He's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. God wants you to be with him for all eternity in heaven. We cannot be there apart from faith in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. But praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Yes, for we that are in this tabernacle who groan being burdened, uh, not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit. That's, if you like, the down payment concerning what will happen to us when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down into the air. The redemption of the body. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, in other words, while our spirit and soul are uh, inside of our body, we are absent from the Lord. Don't forget, this has been to Christians, to believers. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labour that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now this is speaking concerning what we commonly call the beamer or the judgment seat of Christ. It's got nothing to do with you if you're an unbeliever. If you're an unbeliever and you, you die in that condition without faith in Christ, you will stand before the great white throne. It's a different sort of a judgment happening there. The great white throne judgment is when people are cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, as I said earlier in the message. But there's no need for that. God does not want that for you. God does not want you to go down to hell and be cast into the lake of fire for eternity and burn forever because of your sins that have not been forgiven. He wants to forgive you of all of your sins this hour, my friend. And if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you put your faith alone in Him, and become a child of God, your soul will be saved. This is God's desire. God is not willing that any should perish. Did you hear that? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Again, repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. Absolute guarantee of salvation through Christ alone. Salvation is not found in a man-made religion, my friend. It's found in a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who has made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men that we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Listen to that. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we pers persuade men. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. 
and yet God will have all men to be saved. And not only that, but to be in, to come unto the knowledge of the truth as well. Now the truth is found in the Word of God, the Bible. It's also found in a person. It's found in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He said in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We need to come to Christ to be saved. You need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to become a child of God. To have forgiveness for your sins. Otherwise, when you die, you'll be in hell and God does not want that for you, my friend. That's why I'm here this other to bring you the message of hope and salvation and the love of God. And also the wrath of God if you refuse the love of God. There are two options. Heaven or hell. Salvation or damnation. God wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. Go ahead to heaven. Go ahead to heaven. Have a good night. God bless you. Thanks. Yes, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we uh, commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf. That ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, in other words, if we're out of our mind, uh, it is to God, or whether we be sober, in other words, if we're in our right mind, it is for your cause. For the love of God, the uh, love of Christ constraineth us, because we ju thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Yes, we're dead in our trespasses and in our sins, without Jesus Christ as our Saviour. No, I'm going to tell you that you can put your faith in Christ and become a child of God. Have forgiveness for your sins through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. There's no other way to get to heaven, my friend. You've got to come by the Lord Jesus Christ, otherwise you can't come at all. You can't be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, says here, For the love of God, Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Uh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. So it's a transformed life. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your life will be transformed. You'll hate the things you once loved, and you'll love the things that you once hated. That's what God does for, for us. Yes, behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself, in other words, made uh, us his friends by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's why I'm out here. I have the ministry of reconciliation to bring people back to the Lord Jesus Christ, to God himself, through faith in the Son of God. This is why we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. We're here as ambassadors for Christ. And that's what it says in a minute. We'll see that. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us, that is, unto the believers, the Christians, the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, in other words, instead of Christ, 
be reconciled to God. In other words, be made friends to God. For he hath made him, that is the Father, hath made the Son to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will receive the righteousness of God by faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. The one who died on the cross can be your saviour at this hour. Will you come to him? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you don't believe on him, you remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell because your sins have not been forgiven. I hope that's not your case. But if it is, that's why I'm here. To bring you the message of salvation for our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the one who loved us enough to die upon the cross, but God commended, that means he displayed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We come to Christ this afternoon and believe upon him and become a child of God. Again, we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Don't leave earth without the Lord Jesus Christ, because if you do, you'll be in terrible trouble, because you'll be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. He wants to save your soul. So what do you need to do? Just again quickly, when I finish this message, come in repentance toward God. In other words, change your mind, Agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.